class 10, 11 and 12. Uh, it's an early morning as against the evenings that we've generally met. So, we're all very fresh and we'll make the most of this morning. I'm going to summarize some of the things that many of you would already know, but particularly for the benefit of class 10 students on why we need to have sound reasoning, on why we are going to explore US education today. And then after that, we have our university guests come in and introduce themselves. And we'll follow that up. After the university guests introduce themselves, we'll have class 10 leave us for today. For class 11 and 12, we will do a workshop, a short workshop, on the application process. Although if we finish the initial part early, then we can have class 10 also attend, they are free too. But I would, for the interactions, it's only going to be class 11 and 12. That will go around and meet with the universities on their tables. But we'll do a new workshop on the application process. And I'm going to invite uh, some of my university friends to take questions. We'll create some sort of an admissions panel here and bring different perspectives to you. I always feel at home when I come here. Thank you very much, Wing uh, Commander Ganesha, for having me always and for making me feel welcome. Uh, thank you to all the teachers. Um, and administrators here. And thank you uh, to all my young friends here for agreeing to listen to me every time I come here. Uh, let me just quickly recap. Uh, so these are the 15 universities that are here. These are special individuals, uh, some spectacular education uh, available here for you to explore. And uh, I'd invite all of you to make the most of it. Um, if you had to visit all of these 15 universities, it would be a real challenge. It would be about $10,000 spent to get to all of them. Uh, long flights, long drives, etc. So we'll let you explore the United States right here. But just four pieces of information before we meet or uh, we have the universities uh, speak. Number one, People are leaving home to study outside of their home countries, not outside of just outside their home cities. There are 4.1 million students studying outside of their home countries today. And by 2020, there will be 7 million students studying outside their home country. Today, with all the information that's available, more information, more flights, more opportunities, people are choosing to study on planet Earth. Whether it is in Bangalore or in Boston is not the question anymore. It's about what's best for me. Wherever it is available, I will get there. So, first rule, don't leave planet Earth. Stay on Earth and study on planet Earth wherever you can. And the second piece that I want you to be mindful of is that among all the different countries today, the United States is by far the most popular. You have a million students coming into the US to study. Currently, there are 9,74,000 international students in the US studying in what is the largest educational system in the world with 4,700 plus colleges and universities. 45 of which are ranked above the IITs. So you will find that there's a lot of high quality education that's available. 27% of all higher educational institutions in the world are in the US. And Americans are only 4.5% of the world population. Seven of the top 12 technology companies are American. 25% of the top 500 companies in the world are American. And 
40% of the Nobel laureates in the world are American. And they are from all across the US. They are not restricted to 8 or 10 or 20 US colleges. They are from a broad spectrum of US institutions. We tend to box American education like we do with some other countries. But these systems are not comparable because you are talking here about the largest educational system in the world that is producing all of these outcomes. Whether it's the Nobel laureates, whether it's the technology companies, whether it's the top businesses in the world, this is an outcome of the US educational system which encourages you to be innovative, creative and entrepreneurial. And an outcome of that is this. These are some of the companies that are founded at US colleges and universities. These are not companies founded by, you know, Google wasn't founded by a 65 year old trying to make some more money. Google was set up by young students while they were at university or just graduated from university. FedEx, Microsoft, Facebook, all of these were an outcome of the style of educating young people. While China's economy thrives on manufacturing, India's economy thrives on service and agriculture, the US economy thrives on research and innovation. And I would, and that research and innovation and that creativity and that entrepreneurship is really coming through the educational system in the country. You need to have a really robust educational system to have these kind of outcomes. Government, companies and universities collaborate in the US to produce some of the outcomes that you've just seen. And many of these outcomes are delivered by international students who come to study in the United States. Google was set up by a Russian who came to study, did his bachelor degree in computer science along with an American in Larry Page. Sergey Brin uh, collaborated with him. So all of us should know that as international students, we are welcome. I also wanted to point out that I am a... In the last 19 odd years, uh, there have been an abundance uh, abundant opportunities for me personally to move over to the US, but I love my country. I love my family, I, my roots are here, I live here, and I cannot stay without dal and rice. And while I talk about American education, I want you to be clear, I can be a patriot, I can love my country, but at the same time, I want to make sure that my countrymen have the best education that's available on the planet. And I, I share all of this with you after wedding things myself, having traveled to multiple different countries, different institutions, having counseled several thousand students. I know that today I can speak with you without any fear or without a lack of conviction because I have seen it all. I have experienced what the outcomes are. And some of these numbers are self-explanatory. They're compelling. Some of these details are compelling. So I'm encouraging all of you to really explore American education without really comparing it directly with other systems. Just by itself, it's a very, very large system uh, to explore. There are many different types of colleges in the US. We'll do a workshop today uh, on the application process and during that workshop I'll, we'll bring some perspectives from universities and we'll, we'll explain a little bit to you. We'll also take lots of questions, so I'll come back to that. The third thing I want you to take back from you today here is that you want to wear your own shoes and your own clothes, you want to find what you love and pursue that. Go out and explore. Don't, your decision should not be a borrowed uh, you know, your career should not be a borrowed career. You don't want to be unhappy when you grow up. So make sure that you find what you love. And it can take a lot of courage sometimes. Uh, we often choose careers out of fear. Fear of failing with something that's new. Fear of failing with something that is uncommon. Society has a very magnetic effect on us. And for that reason, 
we can be extremely nervous at times. This gentleman made movies, very popular movies, comes from a family of 12 plus doctors, came to the US to do a bachelor degree in filmmaking and uh, was extremely successful as a filmmaker because he chose to resist the temptation of following the crowd. To stand alone on this stage for any one of us to come up and be by ourselves is so much more challenging than to be in the crowd because you can, you can hide in the crowd, you cannot hide here. Every move, every action, everything gets analyzed, scrutinized. So it takes a lot of courage to do what is a little bit different from what the rest of the world is doing. And I invite all my young friends here to be courageous in, in choosing what they want to study and where they want to study. Sometimes where you want to study as well. We're so glamour struck, we're so much about, oh, I have not, you know, my uncle knows about this university, so I will go there. Well, you want to explore. The number one university for you might not have been explored yet. Today you might. The number one university for you is not the number one university for your friend. So you want to find out what the best career is for you, what the best colleges are for you, and do that without fear. The last thing that I want to share with you is that the world of careers is changing and it's become critical for all of us to, to not let history repeat itself. Yes, um, we don't want, if history were to repeat itself, you, might, you would have come or traveled on elephants still. We wouldn't have used automobiles. If history were to repeat itself, we wouldn't be using computers. If history were to repeat itself, we might not have had chairs because a couple of thousand years back, I don't know if there were chairs. The reality is that we're constantly evolving as a species and careers are also evolving consequently. So there's no point choosing a career which is historic. You could choose a career which is historic, but even those careers are changing by nature. Increasingly, it's about freedom. It's about doing multiple things together. It's about doing a double major. It's about doing a major and a minor. It's about combining areas of subjects because great things exist at intersections. Because subjects intersect. Today, a journalist needs to study technology. At Google engineers were, are being given psychology lessons. Some of my former students sharing that with me, that we, we, we get put in a room with, with psychologists because if I have to write code and I have to program and I have to do things, I need to understand the people and how they think. So an engineer is having to study psychology. There is a lot that is going on in the world out there. You don't have to be a singer or an instrument player to have a career in music. You can combine business and music and be involved in the multi-billion dollar music industry. You can combine psychology and music and become a music therapist. You don't have to be an athlete to be in sport. I've probably shared a story, I'm not sure in the past, of a hacker uh, in 2001 who came up to me and said, Sir, I'm a hacker. He was in class 12, he said, I hacked into the email account of my principal and all my friends in class, etc. And he had a twinkle in his eye. He was so happy that he was a hacker. In 2001, hacking was a criminal activity. If this young man was admonished, caught by a scholar and put in jail, his, his love for hacking would have been finished right there. 